I think because of obviously four turnovers and the way the offense played, that put the defense in a bad spot. But what did you see on some of the errors they were making? Yeah, it just, it, it was, you know, like, whether I was looking at plays uh, breaking down the, the huddle segment, um, it just it just didn't, they just seemed not to be put in the right positions. Mm -hmm. um, I think Tony White kind of alluded to that already. He was, you know, some of the, he didn't put, he didn't set them up for success. Um, Nebraska does a lot to, of movement on the D line. They like to go, from, they like to stem gaps, go from, you know, cross face. They got caught. They got caught up in, in a lot of that. Um, and they just, you know, I'll give, there was good coverage at times, but Indiana just made plays. Uh, and they, Nebraska lost a lot of the one-on-one -on -one battles. Um, and I just, they just, they couldn't, they had an opportunity to step up and, and make plays early on mm -hmm. and, and to kind of slow down the momentum. And they never did that. Obviously, that fourth, and, that fourth uh, and two stop by Bayer, you thought, okay, here we go. Yep. But they just never seized that. Um, they never got momentum from that. Uh, and they got, they got punched in the mouth, and they, they couldn't respond. Mm -hmm. um, and Indiana just made plays. The, the play calls they had against our defense was well executed. That's a well-coached team. Uh, Signetti is, has this team playing uh, very, very efficiently. Uh, the, very surprising, I'll put it that way. I, was, mm -hmm. I thought this was where Nebraska could um, make some hay was our defense because our offense, but obviously that was far from the truth. Let's talk about that man beating man. So there were 12 times they targeted the top three cornerbacks, 11 completions, 170 yards. you got to win those battles. Yeah, and I think part of it is, you know, the, just the philosophy. Jay mentioned and Coach White mentioned uh, kind of being caught um, w unexpectedly. And I think the way that Indiana's offense is built, right, you always have an inside run threat. Mm -hmm. You have an outside run threat. You have a vertical passing concept. It's every play. So conceptually, their expectancy rate for run versus pass on run versus passing downs, they can wreak havoc because a lot of things look very similar. They are well oiled with what they do with their same three or four concepts and they have multiple people that can do it. The one-on-one -on -one thing is why I think Nebraska was demoralized so quickly. Hmm. When you can't win one-on-ones yeah. and you're not winning one-on-ones, especially early on with some of those throws from work, Mm -hmm. you can get the sense in a hurry mm -hmm. that it's going to be a long day because what you'll start to think is there's not much else I can do. Yeah. And when you start to feel like that, you can get your feels in a hurry. Yeah, and as good as that RPO is, mm -hmm. ever since work tore his knee up in 2022, he's not a runner anymore. Right. They don't even have that part of the concept. Yeah, but that's, they, they do it fantastically. You yeah. mean, that's you saw all the, especially down the goal line, the red zone area, mm -hmm. those, are, those are so hard to defend. The timing of it, making sure the, the, the pass catcher is at the line of scrimmage behind it so you don't get the downfield right. blocking issues. Um, and and, and the, what they do that I, that I love is they always have an outside run option, whether it's the QB or not. They have an inside runner, mm -hmm. an outside option, and a vertical threat. It's almost every play. And they get away with it without it having to be the quarterback. I wouldn't even honor QB run game. And you saw Nebraska on the goal line, Buford kind of rolled the dice on that little twins route. Yeah. He comes to get the court. I mean, Rourke's not going to run for much, but it's that kind of conflict where they stress you on every play. It yeah. leaves you guessing. And afterwards, he pointed himself. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, he, he knew he made the mistake. Yeah. What about the way they do run the ball. I, I know you're going to show something later with mm -hmm. number 44, they're tight end with yeah. a great run blocker. Their perimeter run blocking is really good as well. Yeah, th it is. I mean, the play I'll show, you know, in, in the huddle later, mm -hmm. was, or that first big run in the first series, it's, you know, it's Nebraska has to do a better job of identifying formations. This is a play here. Formations into the boundary. That's always a big key. Why, is, why are they there? Uh, why is 44 there? You got to, as, as MJ Sherman, why, what's he doing though? He's not normally, what's he going to try to do to me? You got to start, you know, preparing yourself. Um, but just, listen, Nebraska was in some good spots here. You just got to go make some tackles. Tackles were sloppy, but it just, nothing, nothing was going right. When you get the RPO game going, you start second, you're guessing yourself. You, you don't want to, um, you know, you try to play it too safe or you, you don't, you know, almost like you're afraid to make a mistake. And that's what I saw what really hurt Nebraska was like they're almost trying to play so perfect and they want to make a mistake that sometimes you want to go shoot your gun and just go make a play and see what happens. And Bayer did that on that fourth and two. But listen, that's... You this see the guy wide open on the scene? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, he was there. He does blown coverage. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was... It just it just never clipped, right? That one positive play obviously was that fourth fourth and two stop, but just never... It just felt off the whole game. Nebraska's defense looked a step slower, and Indiana just looked like they were, you know, they, they had extra pop in their step. Sometimes you got to give them credit. I know you like Justin Ellison. 
Justice Ellison. Oh, yeah. You saw what he did a couple times. He's right there in the hole, and he makes a man with a clean shot just miss. Yeah, it's, and again, that leads to kind of, that's winning your one on ones, right? And there are a few times, especially early, where I felt like Nebraska was pretty gap sound, right? You maybe could, could argue, you know, head inside versus head outside, or B versus B and a half gap, mm -hmm. but he could get so skinny through the hole, and he stressed your whole front, whether it was front side A, B, C gap, or back side A or B. He, he was, a, he's a very good feel savvy runner. He's a headache. Yeah, give, give us your philosophy. So, and Coach Rule <laughs> talked about this. They could have done some things to where they limited the amount of scoring, mm -hmm. right? Could have run the ball, punt instead of going out on fourth down, or you shoot your gun and you lose 56 to seven. Yeah, it's, it's hard, right? It's kind of six one day, one way, half a dozen the other, because you want your team to have the right mentality mm -hmm. to no, no matter what, we're not going to look at the scoreboard. We're going to go out and play, we're going to execute yep. and do our job. But also in your back of your mind, you know this team is very fragile mentally and have a, you know, they have a hard time winning and they haven't won a lot. So there's that, there's that cat and mouse game you got to play with yourself. It's like, do I, want to, do I want to cater towards their mindset and their feelings or, you know, you say the hell with it. We got to learn how to operate and this is what we got to do. Yeah. But I have no problem with it. I mean, I, listen, it's, it was going to be, it wasn't going to, it was going to be a loss no matter what, right? I mean, whether it's 56 to 7 or, or 35 to 7, it's still a bad loss. Yeah. Uh, but I, I have no problem with that. You, you're trying to get this team a mentality to go. We got to go forward. Let's stop worrying about making mistakes. Get over this hurt, mental hurdle that has obviously still got them hung up quite a bit. I, I think, I, real time, I, I have to be honest, revisionist history, I, I still don't know if I think differently, but real time, I was short of getting a guy injured. Mm -hmm. I think you have to learn how to fight. It's part of the growth and emotional maturity that I think this team needs to go through, right? We heard all the bad jokes about the surrender whites. Why surrender, right? You want to speak that into existence or do you want to keep playing? Right. Real time, I, I think I'm a fan of keep, I want to keep playing um, short of risking injury for my guys. Well, on the radio broadcast, Greg asked you, should they he pull Rayola? Yeah, he that was, you about that it, was right? a really interesting conversation because yeah. I understood what he was saying, mm -hmm. right? He kind of had more of the fan sentiment and, hey, you know, let's kind of move this thing along mm -hmm. in real time. I'm thinking, you know what? I want to compete, right? I, I think they need to go through that seasoning to know what that feels like. Yeah. So in preparation, you don't feel like that again. I can't stress that enough. I'm not saying in any way because this, this phrase is used a lot around Nebraska, you know, slow blinker. Mm -hmm. I know Dylan is not that. But the last few weeks, there have been guys open quickly that he's got to go, and he's thinking more. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a process of taking a lot of hits, being a, being a freshman. Potentially. But also, you're trying to just be too perfect. I think, I think you can overanalyze things. Mm -hmm. I think coming off a of bye week um, wasn't obviously great for this football team. I think uh, you, you can tend to over try to be too right, and sometimes you know what, you got to take what the defense has given you, no matter the, what. The pick to Fedoni yeah. was a perfect example yeah. of that. He had the two by mm -hmm. the top receiver on the hash. He was yeah. wide open. Sometimes you want to try to, you know what, this isn't the route that's, you, you, but you, you like to know that, oh, I made this throw against this coverage. It wasn't the way I was supposed to go, but I can do it. But sometimes I you know about, man, what's in front of you? Take it. Yeah. Right? And just, and just be efficient and be quick um, in Let's get an offense in the right spot, but I think he's just, it's trying to be too perfect right now. You can't go broke taking a profit. We talk yep. about it all the time. All day. All right, running back, eye yes, back. Yes, sir. What's going on? Yeah, it's a couple of things. Number one, I think the offensive line has been much maligned, and I, I think it's a little unfair. Yeah. I, I look at the concept of how they want to run the ball out of the shotgun with only one running threat. It's too easy for defenses, right? Mm -hmm. They're always going to plus one you in, in the run game. And so I think Nebraska has some options. You can get a second back to give you at least a wrinkle, or you can go a traditional two back to give you plus one in the box. Because if you just do simple math, and Nebraska has four wide receivers in the game, yep. that leaves you seven other players. Mm -hmm. Six because your quarterback won't run. At a minimum, the defense is going to have six. Right. So the concept either has to be my free runner on your free defender, but what defenses do, when they see run without having to account for the quarterback, you get an extra defender in the box, sometimes two. Yeah. 
if you have one of those receivers in blocking like Fedoni does mm -hmm. a lot. So I think it's a recipe for disaster unless you get a second running threat as an option. And if not, do you want to see Harburg occasionally in there? Give him a change up? I, I mean, they, they tried it. And they've, we've seen it you know, through most of the games that yeah. you throw him as a, as a, as a curveball. It does. It just it makes the defense respect to have to practice it. Uh, and it's 11 on 11 football when you have the QB run game. So it does stress the defense that much more. Yeah. But it's, it's hard. It's, it's tough. I understand the aspect of it because that is your backup quarterback. You don't want to get him hurt. But I also know this is an offense that struggled in the last uh, few weeks just running the football and just getting some momentum going and scoring points. Maybe throw it out there for a couple series and see how it goes, and just get, have them throw some off of the get some RPO game going, right? Yeah, and just that, do, he, and utilizing I, I, that he, aspect of it. You could do it. that pretty well with him. Yeah, and and we seen him last year. Most of the explosive plays that happened happened with his legs. Yeah, one hundred percent. They had so many plays over thirty yards last mm -hmm. year. Uh, this and year they're not knew getting it was coming. Right. Even but the you, the evolution of the option, right? But then all the option pass. You saw Malachi Coleman's play. You know some of those big pass plays. You know, off, off the option too was was key for the offense last year. Yeah, Jalen Lloyd got to get. Yeah. You, you could get to trip. You could get to the triple mm -hmm. multiple ways. Mm -hmm. We saw Indiana do it without a running quarterback. It can be done. It's right. just about concepts. So, I think whatever Nebraska wants to try to do, I think they need to get proficient at whatever it is, and then take your chances with variations. Yeah, I want to see more eye formation because that's what I love. Mm -hmm.